Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of The Aftermath. My name is Ian and uh, today's a very special episode. Yes. Not only do we have Dylan as as per usual, you know, the a, a mainstay if you will, um, but uh, we were able to wrangle up the the Third. wet and the wet and wild chase. Hello again. <laughs> wet and wild. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. He's absolutely sopping. Ian. Right. But then, but then, in the singularity that was trying to get him here, we also got Nick as well. Apparently, no I was not prepared for that. Hi there. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay. Um. So this was one of the uh, movies that Chase was wanting to watch for for a little bit. I mean, I remember you. When were you talking about this movie? Uh, you had said a few weeks back whenever you were on the episode. I know I've mentioned it like even before the podcast. I've mentioned all of us watching it before. Really? Right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I I think I I believe when it when it came out, I knew about it. Mm-hmm. But up until right now, like if you were to ask me before we just watched this movie, what Sicario is about, I would literally have no idea. Yeah. I was talking to a coworker earlier today. And they're like, what you watching for the podcast? And I was like, a movie called Sicario, apparently. And they're like, oh, yeah, oh, the one with... I was like, don't tell me, because literally I have no idea what it's about. <laughs> right. yeah, so, so, um, but this, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. What a wild ride yeah. this movie is. Is good. Oh, real quick. Uh, By the way, yes. you were saying you wondered whenever the first one came out. Yes. Uh, it says it came out in 2015. Okay, yeah, so not too long ago. Yeah. I was confused as to when the movie, when the first one came out, because you said there's a second one. Yes, that, uh, let me see, I can look that up real quick. But. That one came out in 2018, the second one. Oh, yeah, okay, that's cool. Very short after. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. just about three years, so. Yeah. It was just that good. Man, oh, where do you even begin? The it, start. I, uh, n- but, like, <laughs> it's. Well, the start of the movie is very jarring with the first scene of just mm-hmm. a home yeah. City, and then all of a sudden, you just see a bunch of SWAT team people come mm-hmm. out of the panel. Not even just see a SWAT team. Like, they run their vehicle through a house. Oh, yeah. And then proceed to, you know. Do as a SWAT. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no right. And raid a place. Uh, I didn't think about this until just now because, again, the movie ramps up and progresses in such a very strange way. What was the significance of the bodies in the walls? Was it just like they're dead? That's just how they were. I think that hiding. I want to say that's how they were just killing people and probably just hiding them in the walls to hide okay. the evidence. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think they really ever go too much into detail about that. Yeah, I don't think. They I do think that. it's just like that's yeah, just one of the many bad things this cartel's the doing. starting breadcrumb. I think it's I just kind of like oh, it's part of the drug trade or whatever inciting incident. Yeah, it probably was a like kind of insight of just like hey, you're not really doing a whole lot. Oh, right, right, right. So, like, let's put you here type thing. Right. You know what I mean? It it starts off strong, and I was like, okay, I think I understand what's going on here. Um, But then a shack blows up, and I was like, I am not ready for what this movie's about to give me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So, basically, I guess, like, a a synopsis of what the movie is, it's like a, I think Sicario is um, Spanish for Hitman. Is that what it means? Yes. And so... The movie, our technical, what I would call main protagonist, is not in the movie it, at this point in time, like towards the beginning of the movie. You have this other, which I will say I loved the character structure and the development of these characters. Yeah. I love that it starts off with one or two like main members and then the team kind of grows and then as the movie progresses, it then breaks it all back down and there's only like one or two people left. And I love that. I thought it was such a cool premise. Mm-hmm. I thought it was awesome. So we start off with like this girl, Kate, who, Kate, and then she is divorced, has no children, all that kind of stuff. She has like a uh, like second in command at her like FBI squad or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you could tell they're pretty close friends. And then like this really weird guy <laughs> in sandals <laughs> and goes into a meeting and like obviously uh, Kate's like superior officer is like trying to go and, and do some like dirty stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it very much like. uh, hobo vibes. <laughs> right, right, right. Or just like a careless detective is what it felt like at first. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they were going for a little bit of carelessness or just right, right. Pro- probably actually more laid back type of guy. Right. Yeah, and, and I get that. But it definitely comes across. You got these guys in these suits, and they're obviously all these dignitaries in some level of... A very important meeting, and then you got this yeah. one fucking clown <laughs> yeah. on one side of the table. Right. Oh, man. But like... 
as I was saying, she gets incorporated into this like team, but her second in command guy is not apparently uh, um, like veteran enough. Yeah, I guess doesn't fit the bill. But man, dude, he is an awesome character as well. Mm-hmm. I, he he's the guy. I haven't seen it, but what's that movie that he plays in the most? Like his most popular movie he's in. It's the one where um, it's kind of like a thriller horror movie. Like there's like a racial vibe about it where he's like a. a Are you thinking of uh, us? I believe so. I know it was one that we had talked about wanting to watch. There's a bunch of white people. He's like the only black guy. There's some sort of. Oh like, shit! There's like some sort of a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what thing. you're talking about. I know I what you're talking about. Can't remember the name of it. I can't remember. It was like there. it was like the movie everyone talked about for yeah. like a hot point in time. Anyways, it looks oh, like Chase man. is going to try and look it up to help me out. It was one, like I said, so I, that was the only other movie I think I've seen him in. Or I, I, I haven't even seen the movie. Mm-hmm. The only other time I have seen him is in regards to that movie. Right. And then so to see him in this movie and kind of a, what I would imagine to be a different scenario, mm-hmm. I thought he did a great job. I think, oh, first of all, I will say all the actors in this movie did a spot on job. Mm-hmm. Uh, the movie was called Get Out. Get Out. Oh, That's man. what it was. No, actually, get out. Okay. Leave. <laughs> I mean, You're I'll, done. I, I think they're talking to you, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I think that, uh, like I said, it, all the characters in this movie did a great job. Mm-hmm. It was a very strong cast of very big-name actors all across the board. Even, like, the the auxiliary characters. I want to say the guy who you initially meet with, like, the small little mustache and the glasses, mm-hmm. he's also been in a handful of stuff. And I he's also a strong actor. I can't remember yeah, who he was. The, the white-haired dude, the, like, the main director dude, he yeah. looked mm-hmm. like he's in uh, The Flash. Yeah, he's been in a whole bunch of stuff, too, I think. Like I said, so it's just a, it's a really strong cast. A bunch so of you recognizable can, faces. You can imagine that it is some... Some tension mm-hmm. in well, this movie. Uh, the the guy that you see with the sandals in the first scene, right? That's asking. Uh, He's also been stuff. Yeah. Our character. Oh, are you married? You got any kids or anything? Right. Uh, he actually played in the Goonies. Really? Yeah. Who was he? I don't remember. Oh. I'd have to I'd have to go on this like IDBM or whatever. He wow. also played Thanos. Yes, yes, he yeah, did. He um, bad, and I think during what whenever I was watching that originally, I kept thinking, wow, Thanos sounds really familiar. <laughs> right. Wait, no way. Yeah. 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 He also he played, played that mm-hmm. one dude in uh, Deadpool, the futuristic oh, guy or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he or did. Man. I mm-hmm. who Who's the who's the actor who plays um uh, like in the, the live-action Hellboy? <laughs> You're thinking of Ron War, Perlman. World never changes. Right. I always, for some reason, imagine... Ron Perlman being <laughs> Thanos. I don't know why. Really? Because I think it's just I equate him to be looking like is it the, the face? I think it's just the big jawed horns of like yeah, Hellboy. Yeah, to be honest, it's the color, huh? No, I mean that too. Probably <laughs> I don't know. I just get that same vibe. But I now looking at it, I'm like, oh, okay, I I, I see mm. what they're getting at here. Yeah. But um, yeah. As I was saying, our like what I would call our main character for this movie. Doesn't even show up until probably like the actual like second act of the movie where like things are starting to build up and we're like mm-hmm. getting some understanding of like what's happening in this drug cartel ridden world of Mexico. Yeah. Um, and learning and, that. Uh, and that is his name is. Uh, oh, come on. I used to know it. Del Toro. Yeah. Benicio. Benicio Del Toro. Mm-hmm. He has played in stuff. I think he like you said before when we were watching the movie, you said he played in Star Wars. Which he plays a very diff- very different character in Star Wars than he does here. Yes. yes. But even from the get go, he has this air about him. Yeah. This like look. Something's off. Kinda, I yeah, know. You don't know if you can trust him or not. Type right. Mm-hmm. But like, but even still, it's it's like he seems like a cool character. Yeah. Even though I'm like, I don't know if I can trust this guy. It still has like this. He seems cool though. He's a no nonsense. A no nonsense. <laughs> oh, and sure. we'll get into that in a second. But yeah, is there? Do you guys have a favorite part in the movie? Oh boy, I know, uh, I know, Chase. <laughs> I know, Chase. Like, there was a point in time where there was five different black Tahoes in a caravan just flying through the city. I don't know this about Chase. He has a very weird love of caravan Tahoes. I, I mean, I can't blame him. I, I think it's, I, I think it's, uh, it's formation. It's, yes, yeah. it's all about because for, formation flying oh, is yeah. like, oh, I love Let's it whenever honest, it's just it's hot. Right. Okay, so um, I know we'll probably get to the second movie soon. Yes. Uh, this movie, there's a there's a few good parts. I don't know which one I'd be able to name off right now, 
But right. in the second one, whenever we get to it and you ask me that question, I can tell you hands down. <laughs> Don't what, tell me. <laughs> Don't oh, no, tell no. me yet. I'm not going to tell you uh, the scene yet, but I, I can tell you hands down what my favorite scene in that whole entire second movie is. Really? Yes. I can't wait to watch that movie. Mm-hmm. My, until then. That'll be I a good one. I want to say my favorite scene is probably the whole um, raid of the tunnel. Yeah. And towards yeah. the end, whenever he's just like, don't you dare. Oh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> and that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah, is that there's a no-nonsense section sections in the movie mm-hmm. but uh, uh they're like the cinematography of the movie oh, of like it's, it's dude beautiful. of like the colors of the shot the framing of it there's a few shots where like you're in the back seat of the car as things are moving around and it feels very much like there's a few shots where it feels like you were in the action yes. but not like not like you'd imagine in most movies where it feels like uh jarring and like crazy it feels more solid like yeah. stationary, like mm-hmm. it's like this is a locked off shot, but it makes you feel like I'm in this moving car, and it's like there's some intense moments going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got to say uh, some of my favorite things in this movie and in the other one are like, for, exa- for example, we'll go from um, that car ramming into the house to right, right. <laughs> all of a sudden we're in Mexico and we see this family and the guy waking up to uh, yeah. have breakfast with his kid. Yes. Yeah. And I'd love how... You start seeing those pieces slowly yes, kind of come, yes. come together. I had made the comment during the movie. I was like, I'm waiting for this to pay off. Mm-hmm. And it did not pay off the way I was wanting to. <laughs> that was very sad. There's a there's a police yeah. officer. He has a wife and a son. And there's like every so often, like at these little stop gaps, like you'll notice like there's a bunch of action going on. There's some stuff, some development. And then like it stops for a second and it goes back to him and his family. Um. And it does it like two or three times where it's kind of like, oh, it's no big deal. But then like you can kind of tell like, because initially you can see he's a police officer. Yeah. And then as things are going on, like there's even a, <laughs> a, a, a line, like a quote in the movie that says like, you can't trust all the police officers. They're not always on your side. Right. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold. Especially with that one scene where the police officer is trying to shoot her through the window. Yeah, the exactly, mm-hmm. dude. That's crazy. And like, oh, oh and then uh, there was a, I have seen a clip of this movie before the one where they're they're on that one right there where she gets shot it's like before that whenever mm-hmm. our guy Belicio comes out with his gun he's like whoa 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 I forgot what he said he's like in peace in peace but he's, he says something before that he's like he's, uh, I think he says uh, I come in peace he's like uh he says something. He's like, hey. "Oh, he's uh, right before they <laughs> do do the whole fiasco." He's like, uh, "Do you want to die?" Uh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> there was a couple things. Like, I just remember like this guy comes out the car with like this pistol, and he's like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" And he's like, like <laughs> dressed up in like full tack armor with this like rifle. Like, uh, I wouldn't, buddy. I yeah, wouldn't. Right. And then lo and behold, you know, he just gets laid into. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of there's a a. a I guess the entire movie is like this. There is so many moments where (laughs) this team of guys is like at the ready. Mm -hmm. And you you know that, obviously. It's like, that's what they do. But then there's like, um, when the bandits of some kind like go to make a move and like they, they try their best, but they just get like, Oh yeah, they're absolutely annihilated. There's not a single like <laughs> allied casualty in this movie, I'm sure. Right, right. But like it's it just it takes me by surprise. So I think you're right about yeah. that. I don't yeah. I don't think I ever really paid that much yeah, attention no, to I, it. Right. I think yeah. you're right. There isn't a single allied person that I think it's but, well well besides the officers or the SWAT team in the beginning that gets blown up. Oh, right, yeah. right. But besides right. those people, but the actual main characters yeah, like the, the major show, like task force. Mm-hmm. Main. But the other thing is, I mean it wouldn't be that far fetched, I don't think, because you got these highly trained people with well, of course. weaponry yeah. I, and, and that's to the but, best. I mean, that's what I'm, I'm not complaining about it. Oh by no, any no, means. No. I was just meaning like it's just funny how like it, it feels very one sided. Yes. Where it's mm-hmm. like you got these guys like ah, oh, and like they 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 pop off a shot, and next thing you know, they're like there's he's riddled with bullets, and you're like oh, yep. d- oh, oh <laughs> shit, yeah. man. And it's just it's a it's a funny thing because like you know early in the movie you always get told that like oh these are all you know war veterans and oh, right, right. You, know, you know people fresh out of Afghanistan so like they're very high yeah. on our toes. Oh, I believe it. I'm not saying anything. I'm not, I'm not saying they're wrong for it. Mm-hmm. But like there is uh there's a couple times where you guys were talking kind of poorly about the main actress and how she her morality kind of played yeah. into it a lot. It's, it's just annoying cuz like whenever you get 
word from your head director that's telling you, hey, it's okay. Don't freak out. Right, just, right. You know, just listen to them. And then right. you continue to just not because you see something that's like, kind of iffy and granted i get it's your job but at the same time it's like if you just want to shut up and stay alive and and like i i agree with you to some degree but then at the same time it's like uh, i i can't blame her because i have a very similar moral compass so there's a point in time where it's like if i'm noticing the kind of bad things that are going on i'm not going to say i'm going to do exactly what she did i don't think Mm -hmm. but at the same time it's also like i can't say i wouldn't or i'm like man this is it's kind of messed up like you're just kind of killing guys, so right. Well, oh, what was I going to say? Actually, oh. just continue talking. Oh. I, I got well, Yeah, no, <laughs> that's okay. It's, it's just that, that's where where I was. I w- I had that that catch where I was like, I understand why you're killing these people because it feels innocent, even though it's not. Like they're obviously doing bad things. Yeah, no, of course they're obviously like chopping off exactly. Heads that, and so that's what I'm saying. And, but at the same time, it's also bath. like you want me to like to lie to you know lie for my job and stuff like that and it's like oh man but yeah oh i know what i was gonna say um that's just how it'd be Mm -hmm. well i think their supervisor for one was just saying yeah it's so far up none of this is ever Mm -hmm. gonna like reach back to you or anything if anything goes super bad um and he basically just said listen to them which they they essentially told her told her and the her partner everything they well, needed to know at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Everything they've had, they have said they've been right about so far. Yeah. yeah and exactly. um, for example, uh, he told her not to go into the bank at the one scene. And lo and behold, uh, <laughs> yeah. then she, you know, takes somebody back home with her. Yeah. Who is just trying to find out information about her and everything. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Well, I, dude. Yeah. Information. I think he was really just trying to have a good time, but then she saw the, the hair band or whatever. Uh, I, yeah, I think oh, no. she was like freaking yeah. out. No, she w- he was definitely there to. To gain do, info, yeah. Yeah, gain yeah. info and probably I, do. I don't think he was going to kill her or anything. I think he was just going right. to snoop around. No, he even said they weren't after her. They were after who she's working with. Yeah. Right. Gosh, man, that was an <laughs> intense scene, too. <laughs> yeah. And I can only imagine, again, she may not be super drunk, but you got to imagine, like, being pretty tipsy. A little, and yeah. And yeah. then, like, trying to gain your bearings. And I think they did a pretty good job in, in the scene of, like, mm-hmm. she tries to reach for her gun and then, like, kind of, stumbles around for a second and then there's a whole fiasco that happens and it's like oh man it's just that's crazy stressful <laughs> oh yeah definitely but oh my gosh that is the first scene where we get to see Blizzo del toro's character do some real shit oh well, yeah there was some implied stuff that was going on with the guy before him that they caught that they were torturing that he set the the water tank next to yeah which I thought was kind of strange, but at the same time, I wasn't quite sure what it was for. So I'm assuming they were, he was. I was gonna think. I always think they're gonna water torture him, and and then I forget right. they they never do. You never see that happen. I, never really <laughs> I know what they do to him because like at I, some at some points like I think when you're I supposed that, to leave it up to your imagination. I mean, I guess, but it, it really <laughs> looks kind of like sus. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, it does. It <laughs> looks really sus. When it comes to the noises that you hear in the movie, I'm just like, what's going on here? Right. It, what I thought, the more I thought about it as the movie progressed along, I thought that like he was gonna beat the shit out of him and then just like douse him with water to clean him off, that kind of thing. Where I was just like, <laughs> like, well, like that, but like you know, it's like just to have him. Not only did you get your ass beat, you're tied up and you're gonna be soaking wet to get all the blood off of you. And you're just gonna sit there for a while and just be. <laughs> well, I, love, I don't know. I love how his friend enters the room right before they torture that that guy in like the what was that the first. First act still right yeah yeah. Um, or, yeah I think it's probably second act still second yeah. act so I I like how he's just like hey um if you don't go in there and you don't see anything then you can't say yeah. you didn't really see anything because yeah you didn't yeah right. he was like I'm gonna go in there and he's like well it's maybe like, you it's probably better than you well didn't. if you didn't actually see anything you won't ever be lying exactly <laughs> and I was literally like as the as the uh, the camera was like moving away, we're going on to the next scene. I was definitely expecting like a boom, like he's getting hit with this big barrel of water. He's just beat him out, <laughs> beat him to shit with a huge barrel of water. Yeah, so that'd be funny. But um, <laughs> but like to flash forward again, uh, this character that again was like trying to have sex with our lead lady, um, Emily Blunt, I think is her real name. Mm-hmm. Um, she uh is still inside her room trying to, you know come to grips with what's going on and like <laughs> our who is the guy the guy you were saying who was placed thanos what's his character's name or his his, name? Uh, his uh character's name i believe was matt 
Matt. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Matt's in the passenger seat, and he's not even turning around. He has the he has the <laughs> rearview mirror adjusted to look at the guy in 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 the eyes, just that way. But he's talking to him like straight ahead, like he just couldn't be bothered. That's what right. it feels like. <laughs> and One of then, his lines was, uh, "You know what the beauty about you being beaten to a bloody pulp is." Mm. No one's going to notice a few extra scratches. <laughs> yeah. I love that it's line. one of my favorites. I love yeah. that line and um, him say, uh, him uh, replying for, uh, what was the, uh, Emily Blunt's character. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And the other guy saying, I didn't ask you, and yet I said anyways. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but there's this moment where, like, you get to see he is just beaten to hell. Oh, yeah. And then, like, <laughs> like a... Like a high school bully, it's like <laughs> it's like our guy Belicia del Toro just like grabs his eyebrow, I guess, and just starts yanking on it real hard. He's like, ah, ah, ah where he has like a cut and a scrape and stuff and on. He just yeah. like licks his finger. Just yeah, yeah. Gives and then him that's a the wet willy. He, he gives him a wet willy, and I was like, that's so funny because like it doesn't even probably really hurt him, but it's just gross <laughs> and obnoxious, and it's probably just as frustrating as being beat. Yeah. You do it hard enough, it'll hurt. Oh, I believe it, but still, it's just like, it's more gross than anything else. This guy's just like, stop it, please! (laughs) I'll talk, damn! It is just really funny seeing just like this dude that's like a Looks like a pretty boy, and all of a sudden, just cuts oh, scene, yeah. and he's just like beating his shit. Oh, <laughs> yes. My other favorite part with that was how um, our Sicario in this just starts wiping his hand on him, and how he's how he's, <laughs> yeah. how he's doing it so forcefully. He got, he got blood on his hand. He's like he's like wiping it on the dude's shirt. Like, how dare you get blood on me? But, <laughs> but he's not even he's not even wiping really. He's kind of like slap yeah, wiping, just like, <laughs> mm-hmm. just like hit, hitting his hand. Off, get the freaking shit off. Me. <laughs> get your shit off me. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then I think at that point, too, he, like, I want to say puts, like, an elbow in his groin or his stomach, and he's, like, sitting yeah. there, and he's, like, you're gonna tell me exactly <laughs> what I want to know about, and he's, like, okay, 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 and he's, like, sitting there all up in his face, and he's, like, yes, sir, yes, sir, I got you, and, he, and then he just goes, so what phone we start yeah, with? Yeah, yeah, so what phone we start with? <laughs> and I was, like, oh, <laughs> man, that's so good, but then his character, oh, my God. <laughs> I have never loved and hated a character so much. I don't know which part you get into now. I, I'm just in, in oh, okay. Belisa del Toro's character. I, I there's like there's a like for the most for the majority of the movie there's like the first act and second act. Mm-hmm. You're getting really frustrated with. Um, do we know what Belisa del Toro's character's name is? Because now we we said Matt. Matt's like the kind of head guy, and you have like this other kind of. Belisa del Toro's character, which is kind of this like, you, uh, you don't really know a whole lot about him. Those are like, like the a mercenary, y- exactly. Of, yeah. But you can tell again, like, but like you can't really tell that he's a mercenary. It kind of just feels like he's like this specialist of some kind that no one really knows a whole lot about. Let's see. But there is, like I said before, there's this majority of the movie for like the first and second act where, what's up, Alejandro? Alejandro, yeah. So uh, I was about to look up. I was about to look up the cast, and I saw, yeah. uh, "Is there going to be a Sicario three coming out?" And in this text, it says that that Sicario three is still in the works and has planned as either late twenty twenty one or early twenty twenty two. So, wow. Um, just saying, we Christmas might Christmas Sicario. <laughs> we might have a chance, and then we could all go see that in the theaters. That'd be awesome. So. Um, it's going to be a, just a new action movie. I, I hope not, but I mean. You're saying that the second one's really good, which it, I'm hopeful of. It but, is. Uh, I'd yeah. say it. I'd say the first one is still is really good, and the mm-hmm. second one, I want to say it's a little better actually. Really? Yeah. Uh, what would you say, Dylan? Would you say the second one's a little better, or or do you think they kind of have their own separate things, but they're both really really good? They're both really good. I personally like the first one a bit more. I think I like the first one a l- bit more. Because of reasons I won't get into right now, right, but right. It, it's more so because of one of the characters in the second one, right? Yeah, but oh, yeah. Uh, I'll get into that later. Yeah, but anyways, as I was saying, you're as a watcher, at least for me and my perspective, I was getting frustrated because these two like main guys that are supposed to be kind of our like chief officers in this like scenario, quote unquote, um they're not relaying any information and they're being very suspicious about all of it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you're making it hard for me to care about you and to want to be on your team because I have no idea what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then, but then there's this moment when like the switch flips and like, I would say act three really starts off and it's 
just after everything that happens in the tunnels. Mm-hmm. Everything happens in the tunnels, all that, like, the action sequence where they're, like, killing all these dudes and doing His all this stuff. His free lewd. And, like, and even, like, the, even the scene that's, like, leading up to it, too, like, our, our lady, Emily Blunt, comes walking up in the room that she's not supposed to go into, and our guy, uh, Alejandro, is, like, taking this police officer who has a bunch of drugs in his trunk, <laughs> and she points a gun at him, and then, lo and behold, he shoots her. And then I was like, oh, she's dead, I thought, because I thought he, like, shot her, like, somewhere else besides yeah. the body, but she's, like, gasping for breath, and he just, like, goes up and turns, like, don't ever point a gun at me before, and I was like, or ever, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, oh, he's not playing around. I'm just saying, if I would have, like, witnessed that, I'd have been like, oh, hey, man, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> I'm, can you explain what's going on? I'm just yeah. curious. Just, I want to know what's going to happen. First, I just have been like, all right, well, I went down the wrong tunnel. Peace out. Oh. I, I just been like, oh, I see you doing your thing. I, I'm going to go back in there. All right. Well, again, you know that she went in with the expl- express purpose of like, you're doing bad things and I'm going to stop you. Right. And that's why he was like, don't ever point a gun at me again. Now get up, <laughs> clean yourself yeah. off. And it's like, catch I your just, breath and get back in there. <laughs> I just got shot, damn it. And especially whenever like they all leave the tunnel finally. And then, they're you know they're just like where is she? And they're like all right guys, yeah. we gotta go back in. And then she just comes stumbling out of the tunnel. <laughs> yeah, gasping and then for she breath. She just like punches Matt in the face, and he Dude, just completely like slams her I to know. the floor. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm saying. It's like everything after that point, when you really understand uh, Alejandro's character, and it all comes together. All the pieces get laid out, and you're like, oh shit! Oh, Not yeah. only is he just like a guy who fights for whoever, but again, it's fighting for whoever to get to this end goal for this reason. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yes. oh, shit. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, I forgot. My other favorite line is um, Emily Blunt's uh, partner in this. Whenever she, uh, they throw him on the ground because he's yeah. trying to defend her, whenever that guy points, <laughs> the, points the rifle at <laughs> him, oh, it just says, it just, just, let says, it just let it happen. I, I love that line because it's, it's, it's a little... <laughs> it's a little sus. It's, it's a little <laughs> creepy. Well, it's a little yeah. creepy because he goes, he goes, just let it happen, baby. Just, just let, let it happen. happen. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's still funny to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my other favorite line is like way earlier in the scene whenever they get ambushed with the at the convoy. Yeah. Um, I don't know <laughs> if you heard it, but there's a part where one of the guys that screams at one of the people and he's like, don't look at me. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what was that? So uh, he's like after aiming the up. shootout in the uh, in the traffic happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one of them just goes, "Don't look at me." <laughs> and it's it's uh, great. Wow, what a great time! But yeah, so like I said, all these pieces come together to really show this character and what his true motive is. And then, like, movie magic itself, it snaps right back to him in the backseat of that police car. Yep. And again, for a while, I thought, because we keep tiptoeing around this police officer character, I thought, he's the main bad guy. He just lives this humble life or something, He mm. this or whatever. But, I, but then again, as it started to unfurl, I was like, maybe that's not the case. Right. Um, but then we start, we're like, we have this target we're going after. Mm-hmm. He's in a black Mercedes. He's like a pretty high enough guy and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, as. right. And then he, again, for a split second, you th- or I, I would say a few minutes, I was like, this guy's the main bad guy. But then, <laughs> as it started to really, again, unfurl more, I was like, oh no, there's something even oh, bigger he's just at play climbing here. up the ladder. Right I now. know. And like, oh, he, he's just using people to get to other people. Exactly. To- but like, and, what we were talking about, the sad part about it is the police officer ends up being a casualty mm-hmm. in the midst of trying to get to the main bad guy. Yeah. And so... Just a means to an end. Which like, is sad. Is but the, then... But it really does show how cold Alejandro is and how um, how ready he is to do what he needs to do. Oh, yeah. I think his thought process also was, oh, you have a family. I, I get it, but you should have thought about that before. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, I think he also slightly doesn't care because the guy's working for the people that ended up killing, well, Alejandro's family. Right, exactly. So, right. But I got to say, whenever he gets in that Mercedes and the uh, guy's asking him questions and goes, oh, so uh, what's going to happen to me? I feel like it's one of those uh, <laughs> situations where it's like, yeah, let's not talk about that. Let's yeah, uh, yeah. let's just continue on. Oh, and I, 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 and I, and immediately I, it cuts to a scene of him just like pulling in the 
the other cartel members are just like, oh, what's going, why isn't he pulling up? Right. And then, of course, Yui, and you were just like, well, you goons are in the in the way. In the freaking way. way. Come on. And then, of course, it cuts to him, and his this throat's cut, and he's yeah. just like, <laughs> and then they get killed. <laughs> right. There's like a, oh, man. It's so, it happens so fast, but it's mm-hmm. also, there's like so much that happens there. It's like you said, there's, in so many words, he doesn't say anything in that moment where he's like, what's going to happen to me? It's like, I have a kid or, he, or I think he says, I mean, he doesn't say he has a kid or I forgot what uh, he is. The cop says he has a son. Yeah. Um, and I guess he was trying to say. Right. Kind of, hey. Uh, please don't kill me. Yeah, don't, please don't kill, <laughs> me. don't kill me. I think I might would have let him go. Right. But I'm talking about the other guy. The other guy, I think it was. Um, he was just worried about himself. Right. Yeah. He was just like, hey, what's so gonna uh, what's going to gonna happen to me? Make a left yeah. right here. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm Slow saying. Down. It was the lack of not answering his questions that was que- that was answering right. his questions. Yeah. Like, you fucking know. What you, you know exactly what you mean, what's going to happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> you freaking idiot. <laughs> was, there, was there any more parts you wanted to mention? I mean, the climax. I mean, uh, and that's course. what I, that's what yeah. I'm working up to. Yeah. Like you said, he pulls up. I don't know. If, I think he got shot in the neck or something. He's like bleeding out of like what seems like the left side of his neck. Yeah, either shot he him or he like slit his throat. I want to say he slit his throat because I think I saw a gash. Because probably. So yeah, but that, so anyways, he's like slow down and stop, mm-hmm. and then of course Alejandro gets out the get gets out the car, but we don't see that, yeah. and so we just assume he's in the back seat. So again, these goons are standing up at the gate, like what's going on, mm-hmm. and then of course he, I, I'm assuming the guy can't speak, obviously, because at this point his throat's right. probably slit. It's kind of hard to do. And dude, like magic, because <laughs> again, you don't know where Alejandro is. You think he's in the mm-hmm. back seat in and the then, span but, of like one second? Yes, it seems. Yeah, but. I mean, the driveway might have been like you know an extra five seconds to get right. up there. Of course, he li- he was at a good angle to have them lined up. Oh, for, yeah. Uh, and that's uh, I'm not I'm not saying I'm like having to suspend disbelief. Right. I'm just saying it's like because because <laughs> I'm assuming he's like hunkered down in the back seat, and then before you know it, driver guy dead, all three goons dead, and I'm like, what's right. going on? And then here he goes, do, 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 just do, steps do, do. out of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the right side right. of the gateway, exactly from behind the car, and I'm like, oh, he got out the car. I was like mm-hmm. that's so smart. Yep. And that, then of course. There was that one other part right before that where the guards just like, all right, yeah, he's here. It's all clear. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just get shot. Oh, yeah. He, he, he kept the guy alive just long enough to finish the code word to let him in. And after he's like, yep, I know who you are. You're safe to go. Pow! <laughs> and he gets shot. You're like, oh, why? Why is it? It's so fast. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. And especially it's- leading up to like his final, I would say like, revenge scene oh say. man especially him just going through the house just kind of like knocking guys out the way and then the Dude. poor maid the poor maid <laughs> i'm glad that he kept her alive I right. mean, of course because at least he has some her, heart but she's just, just a maid chill. just she's a maid just, like chilling there like maybe doing like some kitchen duty and doesn't then she say just, a word she just, just right like, follows oh, procedure yeah, yeah. I, I so i don't think he would kill you like for instance if you were like just the cleaner. Oh, of course. Anything. But right, since, right, right. like, the cop, for example, is literally distributing yeah. drugs and their right. goal Working is to him. get rid yeah. of that, yeah, he's th- got to go. Yes. Mm-hmm. I. It, he seems heartless. Well, I mean, maybe he's a little heartless. But right. He, he, <laughs> he is <laughs> Yeah, he is it's heartless. The job done. I mean, considering what he's went through, I mean... Yeah, right, right. Could, I mean, I yeah. Oh, and I didn't even say that. His so, pity well is bottom down. Again, he, his, the cartel that we are talking about at the moment... Yeah. Cut off his wife's head and then yes. also dipped his well, not even dipped, kind of submerged his daughter in a, yeah. in a big Bad of acid. Of acid. Oh, uh, we didn't say that, but that's what that's what uh, is said as Emily Blunt is being you know walking out of the cave and of right. course is getting talked the shit beat down. out of her, talked down to. Yes. Right. He is like, "This is what's going on," and I understand that you're not on board with it, but at the same time, just yeah, know he's going to do what he has to do. Mm-hmm. But before we get to that, I wanted to yeah. mention something. I I think I actually noticed it. This time, whenever I was watching it with y'all, right. But um, whenever he's asleep in the chair, I don't know if you heard it, but you can hear like a couple of screams, yeah. in the background, having a nightmare. Just, yeah, just very, really, very mm-hmm. low, and then he just wakes up and they're gone. And, yeah. Uh, wow, I I didn't catch that. Yeah. I catch that his his uh his hand was shaking and moving, mm-hmm. and then of course he gets he I jolts it, awake. But at first, I thought it was just like my own head. I, I was thinking, it, I think <laughs> I always thought it was like the plane or something. Right. Right. But um, I'm pretty sure there were screams because. Mm-hmm. I think I've seen this movie uh, maybe five times. Now. Yeah, really? Yeah. Dude, okay. I there are moments in movies that I I I have said this before in the past. I'm not sure if I've said this on the podcast, but I love the like a certain definition of art is like 
something that elicits an emotion from somebody. Mm-hmm. And I like that with music. I like that with movies and all that kind of stuff. And there are certain movies that I think are done in such an artistic way. And I think that final scene was that for me. Yeah. Uh, it elicited an emotion from me that I was not expecting. <laughs> which, which final scene are we talking about? Are we talking about the one with Emily Blunt's character? No, no, no. Or? I'm talking about we, like what we just have talked up to. He's walking okay. past the maid, oh, okay, yeah. and he's walking up to the table. And it is this man. And, and at this point, nothing needs to be said. You're like, this is the big bad guy. Oh, yeah. This is the guy, his wife at his left side, and his two young sons at his right the side. The funny thing is, the guy looks so harmless. Of course. <laughs> you know, That's you know, the whole right. point. So uh, tell me. Um, I, I, I knew what to expect with this scene coming up. Of course, up, of course. But uh, I wish I could have seen your face. But <laughs> what what did what was your reaction, basically, or what were your thoughts in your head whenever oh. that... I guess we should say what happened before we get to that. Mm-hmm. I, before we, before we like, t- talk about what happened specifically, I just want to talk about the emotion that I was talking about. There's this moment whenever he's standing there and he just walks up nonchalantly like he's supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the family gets... Bon Appetit. Yes. And then the family gets scared. Uh, Obviously, he has a gun. He's not using his rifle. It's just a silenced pistol at this point. And he's like, no, no, come on, please. Continue your meal. Don't... (laughs) And it's like, when when I tell you, it is the... It is the strongest good bad guy I have Mm -hmm. seen in a movie in a while. Where I was like, I can... I'm not saying what you're doing is right but I can get behind what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I understand the emotion that you're feeling. Oh yeah. And this sense of like, this is what I have to do. And at that point I'm like, man, I, I'm not even going to argue. I'm not even going to argue with you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think that was like the mo- I think the first time I watched that, I was like on the edge of my seat. When I, I, I literally was on the edge yeah. of the couch. Oh, yeah. I was like, I was having a hard time finding my breath. Cause I was like, Oh <laughs> geez, we're about to get into some heavy shit here. Oh yeah. And then he's just, Especially with his just whole family being there. Yes, mm-hmm. and then not only that, uh, um, I always want to say Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro, but it's it's Benicio. <laughs> Benicio. Benicio del Toro does such a wonderful job of keeping this blank expression, and even though he may have this emotion, you can feel it underneath the surface, mm-hmm. but he does, it not, does not come through. He does place. not show he it. He is a very, like, dead on the outside. Oh, man, person. he is seething on the oh, inside. Oh, man, and then he just sits down at the other end of the table, at the other head of the table, and just sits down there with this gun just like on the table resting towards him. And I can't <laughs> even remember I can't even remember all the what they were saying. I want to watch it again. It was more of like, it was more or less pretty much like uh I could tell you one part in particular. Yeah. The guy he actually I can pretty much recap for you real quick. Right. He basically sits down and says, "You know, it's a, it's really ironic. You have families killed every night. Yet oh, here yeah. you dine yeah. with your right, ass. right, right. And then he's like, the, you know, the guy that killed his uh, wife and yeah, like the head, the head cartel the drug Yeah, board. he's like, um, yeah, it was nothing personal. But what oh, would you, what would your wife think uh, if she saw yeah. what you'd become? Yeah, and because then he goes, you know, uh, and it just his what, response. What's any difference from y'all when y'all kill us or whatever? Yeah, right. and then he, he tries like, to. Where do you think we learned it from? Oh, dude, and, like, and it's. I just oh, I love you, his response though. when when I when I t- when I like I said whenever I was saying this whole good bad guy thing, the emotion that I was feeling is if the oh it, it's hard for me to describe it because I'm still feeling these emotions right now. Mm-hmm. It's like the drug lord is there, and you know he is the big bad guy. Right. He's what we're working to get rid of. Mm-hmm. But then he's sitting here and he's blaming Del Toro's character. And it's like almost like you're the ones who made us this way and, and that kind of stuff. And it's like I and you get so you're like, this is an awful character. And then like he was saying before, what is what was his response? Oh, uh, I was saying I love how the guy asked him, oh, uh, what would your wife think uh, yeah. about this? And he just stares at him with that blank expression. And goes, oh. Don't forget about my daughter. Yeah. yeah. Like he leans in. Yeah. Yeah, and just, <laughs> and then and then of course he's like, oh, it wasn't personal. Oh, and actually the guy uh, says in Spanish, "Oh, your uh, your little girl." Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, right, right. Yeah, as a I think as a taunt. Right, right. Which to oh, them, God. But which dude, to them, our beautiful character it just go uh, kind of 
threatens him like today's the day you meet God or whatever. Right. right. Or, but not, I think this before he even says that he is like it wasn't personal, and he's like, but to me it is. Yeah. Yes, and that, then at that point, and at that point, of, both of his both of his my fucking family is pretty yes. pr- pretty fucking. Personal. His children get scared, and his wife even goes, he <laughs> gets like really scared. And then this is what I'm talking about. This is that moment what I was talking about. Mm-hmm. You look a- you look at the big bad guy's face, and then all of a sudden. All of this swagger, all this demeanor, all of this like dude, like this blaming of other people. It is it torn all, away. It and not even like yes, torn away. Well, but it, it all torn away just yet though. It all crumbles down. Mm-hmm. And uh-huh. then you start to see this facade break where then he, behind his eyes, you can tell he's getting scared. Yeah. And then it's like, oh man. <laughs> and then it's like, and then this is where this this morality grip has me, where it's like uh, on one end, you have the good guy doing what's right. Mm-hmm. And then on the other end, you have this bad guy who is the drug lord, who's a bad guy. Right. And you're like, I can understand that. And then in this moment, when you have our, our quote unquote good guy, this mm-hmm. morally ambiguous guy holding a gun and you know <laughs> what he's about to do. Oh, yeah. And then you see the big bad guy get scared for a second. And you're like, is our main bad guy, is our main guy? A, a bad guy is he <laughs> this is where like my morality happens where i was like i know what he's about to do is messed up mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah, at the same time i'm not uh, i'm not a you can't blame uh, him exactly yeah. but at the same time it's like uh, <laughs> but, uh, he's a because he's a bad guy though yeah. it's like right uh, and especially whenever you know the the main drug lord is just like not in front of my yeah. boys uh, yes and then all like, of a sudden uh, yeah and all of a sudden our main character is just like okay okay and yeah. just kills the wife and the two kids and, with and like I mean, one house. Swimming. If there's and if there's one thing this movie has done in droves is make death quick. Yes. Oh, um, and I mean he just like with a flick of the wrist kills <laughs> both of his sons and his wife. And then you see the the face of a man that's just broken who is scared to death. Yeah. I think it was because he wasn't expecting him to do that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, and then of course, and then uh, I, I feel like I keep repeating myself because it's so, it's so strong. Mm. I feel like the emotion is so palpable. <laughs> and, then, and again, he's just sitting there and he's just like, it's time to make peace with God just the right. way it is. It's like, he doesn't even kill him. Like he doesn't immediately kill him. No. He like shoots him in the gut. Yeah. You can hear him go like, Ugh. I want to say he like, shot him. In, I want to say he shot him in the throat maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Cause uh, yeah, you kind of hear choking noises. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know he didn't kill him in one hit, which was, which was very, yeah. he stands yeah. up and then shoots him again, probably in the head. Mm-hmm. But I was like, Oh, it, it just feels like some level of torture. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's what I was trying to put out there. He definitely took his time with that one. And it just, it's so, it was such a, I mean, it was awful, but it was such a good scene. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And it's, it always baffles me how anyone can even attempt to re, to reason with a man that has no. nothing to lose. No, <laughs> right. Like exactly. The dude's like, oh, where'd you think we learned? I bet. <sighs> do you see me? Do you know what I'm here for? I don't think you understand do what you I'm see, here to do. Do you see my eyes? I'm not gonna, I, I want you to look at me in the eyes. I have killed so many people. To get to this moment, I'm not gonna <laughs> wax philosophy and circumstance with you right now while I have a gun to your head. Right. Okay, I do have a. I'm not gonna though. Socrates with you, all right, bro? Wait, what was that? What was that? I was saying I got a theory. It's not anything right. big, but um, if you you notice whenever um, the drug cartel uh guy says, "Oh, your little girl," the the yeah. wife starts kind of like, "Oh my oh, god!" Yeah, all yeah. I, I feel like she might have right. spoke English and heard all of that and just went, "Yeah, she may know." What the hell? I think he even asked. I think he asked if his son spoke English. Yeah, and he was saying the no. So I think it's yeah. Again, he was trying to be at least some somewhat cordial for his <laughs> right. for his children. Especially makes you wonder if like the wife knew what the what the husband was doing. I don't think right. she did because like it's just the the amount of fear she was putting off. Oh, it man. almost felt like, especially when talking about it if she did understand what was going on mm-hmm. it, she definitely kind of looked at her husband a few times going like what I don't, the fuck did you right, do? right. I, I think it's also I don't think you can get, be married to somebody like that and then not know what's going on but I think it's just the extent of what he has done in the past right. I think was the thing I, he was like what have you done to get this man this riled up mm-hmm. <laughs> I think was the thing yeah so it's funny though because I was I got my dad to watch this movie with me once oh asked him about that scene where he killed his sons because right. I was curious what yeah. morally yeah. what he would do <laughs> right right and he said if he was in the same situation, he'd probably do the same thing. Right. To which, <laughs> wow. I, I asked him why, and he said, well, 
the sons are going to probably only have revenge on their mind, and then whenever they right. grow up, want you dead. And so, yeah, it's just a. And, and also, I right. mean, it's also again, if you want to talk about justice, like making even, I'm not saying this is what is justice. I'm not saying this is what we should do. Right. But again, if you're talking eye about an eye, makes the whole world uh, exactly. Yes. But at the same time, if we're talking about a man who has lost all sense of hope of living because his wife got beheaded and his daughter got put in a vat of acid, I'm sorry, but it's that's be but that's fucking but, hard they, to give up on but that what shit. I'm saying is, I'm not Ooh. saying that he's wrong. I'm just right. saying that's some horrific ways for someone to go out. Mm-hmm. I'm they, just saying, comparatively big, speaking, they yes. got off easy. Yes, exactly. uh, yes. Like he could have yes. done a lot worse. His, his right. sons and uh, the guy's sons and daughters, or sons and uh, wife, wife, just three shots to the head, just easy, mm-hmm. clean. They're, it's done. Quick, like like, like like literally flick of the wrist, they're all dead. <laughs> it's like it was, I may stoop to your level, but I'm not going to stoop right. that low. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to be fair, though, I want you to suffer, but at the same time, I just want you to know you're not suffering like I suffered. I want to have that level of skill. Oh, to, I want to have that poker face where you can just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to have that level of skill to basically be able to flick a gun like that, at, like targets. Yes, I think that would be, be so crazy. Neat. Oh yeah, crazy. I mean, just train, Jace. I don't know well, if you ever did that good. Under your belt. <laughs> but then, just to wrap up the rest of the movie, he, the Emily Blunt's character mm-hmm. has like this moment where she's, uh, you know, not wanting to, not wanting to do what Del Toro's character oh. is wanting to do, mm-hmm. and and it just goes to show, like she need, he needs her to sign this piece of paper yes. that. <laughs> actually, says everything was, about, was done. I was by actually the about book. to say that right. myself. I was just like mm-hmm. that. The end scene which is very, wow. like, kind of put together of the rest of his character. You kind of show yeah. him. It kind of shows him more of, like, how much of a I don't really give a shit about you kind of character. Right. Like, I think at the same time, I care about you, I'm but not gonna, I want you to. I'm not going to kill you if I don't have to. Exactly. But, <laughs> yes. like, you know, him just, I, like, and kind even, of, like. He even said, like, I like you. Like, I, I yeah. like you, you remind, remind me of my daughter. Yes. Yeah. And it's just, it was one of those things where, like, he's, like, here, sign this, please. And then yeah. she's just, like, I can't. And then he just kind of puts the gun up to her throat. And you see the <laughs> glove, and he's just, like, I mean. You're going to commit suicide. You're going to commit suicide Sanctuary, tonight if you don't. Right. And she was just started, like, bawling, <laughs> oh, and he's wiping her face, and he's just like, just please. Just, just sign a piece just of paper. It's not paper. that hard. <laughs> but, dude, and then, like, he even says, like, as she signs it, he, like, dismantles the gun and starts throwing all the pieces around the apartment or whatever. You should move to a small town. <laughs> yeah, he was saying, like, this is, like, the land of wolves, and mm-hmm. you're not a wolf. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. And then he, like, walks out, and as he's walking in the parking lot, she, like, has the gun assembled, is going to shoot him, and he just turns <laughs> and looks at her, stone cold. Yep. And then she's like going to shoot him and then doesn't. And then you're like, <laughs> oh man, it's like, it's like he knows. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, it's so crazy, dude. Mm-hmm. So this is the first it's time nuts. I noticed this, but like way in the background in one of the other like buildings, right. I saw like a guy in the background on like a balcony. I don't yeah. know if you heard me mention that earlier. Right. Really? But uh, I was just thinking, there's just a guy out there and he's just, <laughs> like, he's just seeing the going situation. What's going on? Like, what the uh, guys, what, what's going on over there? What's going on over there? Jeez. Uh, your buddy, watch out! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if that was actually a yeah. thing, like a bloopers? You just oh, yeah. you go, hey, buddy, watch out! Yeah. You coming to get shot? <laughs> hey, she's crazy! Watch out! <laughs> but um, actually, uh, it's funny because there's a lot of like analysis videos about this movie with um, really with uh, Emily Blunt's character. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them being that she she's a very follow the by the book type of person. Right. Oh yeah, but <clears throat> right. Following the book doesn't always lead to results, mm-hmm. and right. they're getting results. Gotta bend the so rules. Yeah, they're Do more your own way. So I think in the analysis video I saw, it was saying the the two characters we follow that are part of the CIA are more right, right. than she is because they're doing what they have to to yeah. make a difference. Mm-hmm. Right, right. It's crazy. When dude. it comes down to it, sometimes you you really do have to do that in order to actually get results. Right. It may seem kind of messed up, and it may seem you know, not by the book and maybe morally it's not fair. A, it's an it's ends just how justify things. the means yeah. mentality. Oh, right, right. Ask for uh, forgiveness and not for permission. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for listening to this episode of the podcast. Just thank you, Chase and Nick, for oh, no the, problem. Yeah. be on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Always. I'll be um, here more, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You ever rate movies on here? I'm uh, sure. What would you give this, probably? Oh, dude, a solid 9 out of 10. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, or I, I just it, oh, it just like I said, movies that do a good job of like, um, not laying it all out for me, and then eliciting some strong emotion for me. I'm like, man, I can't, 
even if the movie's like probably bad, like all together, if it has some <laughs> level of like eliciting some emotion, yeah. I'm like, dude, this is a pretty good movie. <laughs> yeah. We we I mean, we joke about it, but we watched Godzilla versus Megalon. Yes, and we watched like old sh- is it Showa? Mm-hmm. We watched old Showa era Godzilla movies, and even though they're like probably not the most pretty or the like the quote unquote best movies out there, they elicit some emotional response from me, and I'm like, dude, hell yeah, let's go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are the best though. <laughs> they're so funny. But anyways, thank you so much for listening. If you're trying to find us, we have a link tree forward slash Ian Wolf. You can find all of our links there. Um, you can also just look up the aftermath and all the podcast uh, catchers out there and you should be able to find us. But um, until next week, we should have Ethan on with us. Yes. Drum roll. See you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>